Okay, so I just dropped in to have lunch and on my way here to my house to get lunch, I stopped at Bunnings to pick up some gear. And for those of you outside the country, it's pretty much the main hardware shop in Australia. And I found this little device. It's a motion sensor and it can be connected to Wi-Fi. Now, if it does what it says it's gonna do, it looks like it would be pretty handy, like a pretty handy little product because I can bet that I can connect this to Home Assistant quite easily. Now, I also need one. So I've been meaning to do this job for ages. I took that down about a year ago because I needed to use, use it somewhere and I haven't got around to putting it back up. So as a result, these lights are in here are on like all the time, which is a waste of power. So it was a job I needed to do and I can try this out at the same time. Uh, see if it works. And the reason why I might wonder if it works is I looked at some of the reviews online and people don't like it. Apparently it's really hard to pair and also it doesn't work well as a sensor. So I'm gonna try it and see how I find it. And I will agree that um, Brilliant Lighting's products are a bit confusing to pair, like trying to figure out what's going on and it doesn't seem to work. So I think that is the thing. But once you've got it paired, I found that um, the fan controllers that I've used are, are actually pretty good. So let's jump in, we'll take this one apart, have a look inside stick it up on the ceiling and try it out. All right, so we've got the sensor here. It's quite large, which I don't m mind too much because sometimes the little really small ones are really hard to get the wires to actually fit in properly. And if you've got to put it over an existing hole, if it's too small, that doesn't work. So it is sort of chunky, but out in the garage, it's gonna be fine. Or perhaps you'd have it in a like a walk-in cupboard or a laundry or a toilet, something like that. So the size doesn't matter too much, but it is quite chunky. Just open it up. It's got one little screw in the side and it just twists, I think. Yep. Uh, we've got the sensor just here and an indicator light that must flash through the cover to show that it's sensed something and our little daylight sensor just there so we can adjust the um, time. We've got a reset button here. Just there. And we've got the typical line in, neutral line out. So that's to connect our light and power to. So with some sensors, they get wired up, they have actually a switch feed in and then a line out to the light. So that probably wouldn't work so well. You'd have to make the, the feed in not switched and so that it's just a constant active, so that way the Wi-Fi is always connected and it works properly. And then that, of course, will still go out to the light. So we'll just open up the back and have a look inside it. So we've got a power supply over here. Let's see if we can get this out without breaking anything. This was actually pretty easy to take apart compared to most devices. So we've got a fuse just there. We've got our motion sensor. We've got a relay down here that turns on the output to the light and we've got our little two-year module just there and a power supply here. Now this is a non-isolated power supply which is fine it's all right for a little device like this but it does look pretty actually looks pretty decent. Um, I guess it's got to drive this relay which looks quite big actually but it does look like a pretty decent sized relay and I would say that it looks quite, quite well made, this board. Like some of these boards, you open them up and they're dodgy as anything. But this one actually looks quite good. So this was 29 bucks from Bunnings. But it actually looks quite well, well made and put together. And that's the two-year module right there. All right, I'm going to put this back together now. And then we're going to install it up on the ceiling and we'll try it out and see how we go connecting it to Home Assistant. While I was at Bunnings, I also found this one here, um, which I'm pretty keen to try out as well. And that had equally bad reviews. Apparently it, it never turns off, it just stays on all the time. But I still wanna try it and see how it goes. Now this, I have used these before, the non-smart version, but I haven't actually seen this one around before. But it is very, very similar to the Clipsal one, which is basically the go-to best sensor for outside that you can get. And I've used these for many, many years. However, I have discovered that recently these don't seem to be working like they used to. I don't know why, I don't know if it's quality of some sort of component, but 
I just don't think they're as good as they used to be 20 years ago. But they are similar. But this one here has got that Wi-Fi built into it. So they, it operates exactly the same as the other one, except it also sends out a signal to um, trigger other devices. So we're gonna tr we'll try that one out later though. Okay, so I've finished wiring up my sensor here. It was pretty easy. There's plenty of room to connect the wires up there. Um, so I'm just gonna pop the cover back on and line it up. There we go, no worries. Now there's a million different ways to wire sensors. So I'm gonna, in my case, use this little device here and do some modifications to what I have got set up here. And once I finish, I'll do, show you a little diagram of what I've actually done and why I've done it. So I'm gonna relocate this double switch here to my garage side, and then I'm gonna install this um, in here to replace the, the Shelly 2.5. So I'll just do that now, and then I'll come straight back to you. Okay, so our laundry side is connected, and as you can see here, we've got our output that goes to the down lights, the switch, which is this push button here, and L and L1, confusingly, is actually just linked together. So that's just our actives. And neutral is pretty straightforward. It's the neutral in it. I run a new neutral through the outside of the garage. So now we just have to pop on this side. And instead of using push buttons, I'm gonna use switches. So the reason for that is I was doing a long push with this one to turn on my, my strip light up here. So I'm gonna change it so the second one turns on my strip light up here. And that's been controlled by a Quinn LED, by a home assistant. But I can use one of the inputs to turn it on and off via home assistant. And the top switch is going to turn on a manual override to turn on my garage lights. So this, this one here is the feed out to my garage light. And that this one here is the feed that turns on the sensor light. So I'm gonna connect that up to an active feed. So I'm just gonna put this in and then we'll try setting up this new sensor. Okay, so our device is all wired and installed out here and I've renamed everything so that it's got the correct names in Home Assistant. So basically what we've got here now is a switch that will turn on these lights here, like so. And I've got a secondary switch here, which is a manual override to turn on our garage lights if the sensor light doesn't come on. So if we turn that on, that will turn our garage lights on. And it will go through this um, Shelly and it will, the power will get monitored if we turn it on that way. Okay, now secondly, this top switch is actually just using the switch part of the Shelly and I've detached the switch from the relay. So output two on this Shelly um, it doesn't get controlled by this switch. So basically that is gonna get left on all the time and that powers the motion sensor up, up there. Now in this application, it probably isn't entirely necessary, but what that means is that if we're getting nuisance tripping, like especially if it was an outside sensor light, that way we can turn off the sensor light if it's become a nuisance, which is something that can sometimes happen. Um, so that's just an example of how you can deal with Probably you would use it for more outside sensors rather than inside sensors, but it's a good demonstration of how you could wire it. All right, now we're just gonna see if we can pair this uh, motion sensor with the two-year life app, not the brilliant lighting app. Okay, so we're in the two-year life app. So we're gonna press plus to add another device. And I wasn't sure whether it's lighting or sensors. So we've got a motion sensor here, but it's not really a motion detector because it's got a relay as well. So I would say at a guess that we're gonna be looking at a PRI, PRI light, and it's Wi-Fi only. So we're gonna select that one there and see how we go. So I've got my information in there. You have to put your Wi-Fi details in there though, and we'll hit next. Okay, so I believe it is flashing, so we'll just do confirm, and we'll do black blinking quickly. Let's see how we go with this. Sweet, it's worked. It's, it looks like that was the right device to choose. So we can just give that a name now. Uh, brilliant Smart 
garage. There we go. So that was pretty easy, I would say. We're done there and done. Now to get our local key. Oh, wait a sec. We can try it out. Oh, that's cool. Right, so we can set the time that it stays on for. So at the moment it's set for 10 seconds. So we can adjust that up to 10 minutes. Oh, that's really good. And we can set the lights level. Can we? Test. Oh, sorry, we can set it to automatic. That's whether it turns the light on. Override. Okay, so the lights in here just turned on. And we can set it to test. Let's test do. We'll put our time back down. So we put it to test mode. Yeah, and that's working now. So I'm just moving and it's turning on and off. We can set our sensitivity. So we can set it to medium or low. I'll just leave it up at high. And we can set the lux level as well, can we? Oh, yep. So we can set it to work in daylight or dark or dusk. So in this case, I guess, if we set it to work in dark, that way it will only work when the garage door's down. And I'll try it out on that mode there. So we'll put it into auto mode. And now it's stopped turning my lights on and off. And if I turn it to daylight, it should work again. Yep, that's working. Okay, so I might just put my garage door down and do a walk test. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, so we're just about to go into the garage and I've got it set to 10 seconds and I've got the sensitivity on high and it only works in the dark. So I'm gonna open the door and go in and see how we go with the light turning on. Well, that works well. It's perfect. And I've actually got a little notification from my two-year smart app, which I might need to turn off. All right, let's go see if we can get our local key. Now, to get the local key, I've made a separate video. I'll just put a link in the description if you want to watch how to get the local key. Um, so, uh, I won't include it in this video. Um, so, I'm going to go get my local key and see if we can set it up into your local and home assistant. Okay, so this is Future James. I have actually set this up before and it almost worked, but I got the a mode and the sensitivity wrong. They need to be selects instead of numbers. So, I've got it all up and running now, so I'll show you how to go about it. Of course, you'll need your local key and we'll just jump into the configuration tab, devices and services and add integration. And you will need to have to your local already installed, which you can install through the hack store. So we're going to select our device, which is this one just here. The ID comes from the to your platform. Hit submit and paste our local key in here. And we're going to give it the name garage smart PIR and hit submit. And we've got six entities to set up now. So the first one's a number, and that's going to be data point two. And that is going to be um, the Lux level. If you don't want to watch this section, you can just jump ahead and look it up on the website on my blog. And you can just look it up there. And it's going to be zero to 2000. Okay, the second one is going to be a number as well. And this is going to be the time that it stays on in seconds when it's triggered. And that's from 10 seconds to 600 seconds, which is 10 minutes. Okay, the next one's going to be a select. And it took me a little bit of time to figure this one out. Um, it's the mode. So we've got auto, override, and test. And it's zero, one, and two. And the names are, and it's data point 
four. And the names are auto, override, which will turn on the light if it's off, override, and test mode. Hit submit. And the next one's a select as well. And that is the sensitivity mode. So that's data point six. And it's got zero, one, two, and it's got low, medium, high. Submit. And our second last one is data point seven, and that is a switch. And this actually is very interesting, I thought, because what, the way we wired it, we didn't really need to do it that way. So we wired it so it could be disabled. Um, that is not actually necessary. So if, if it's been a nuisance and it's going off and you want to stop it with Home Assistant, then you can simply turn this switch off. And for that reason, we're going to call this PIR Disable. I at first thought it would turn the light on and off, but it doesn't. It turns the whole thing on and off. So it makes it stop working if you turn it off. And the last one is a binary sensor. And that is data point eight. And this triggers every time there's motion. Now, also a little bit interesting is that if the light is on, it comes on for 10 minutes, but say, and this will still trigger even if, if there's someone in the room moving around, it'll trigger and it sort of resets itself about every 10, 20 seconds by the looks of it, um, even if the light's on. So this is like a, oh, it's a motion sensor. It's exactly what it is, but it triggers regularly if someone stays in the room moving around. So you could use that in automation if you wanted to make it a presence detector as opposed to motion detector. Um, I thought that was quite interesting. So we'll submit that and we are done. We're going to stick it in the garage. And that's it, it's set up in Home Assistant. And I know that works because I've already tried it. And we've got all, all our entities here. So we'll just have a look, for example, at the select, the garage mode. And we see we've got, it's in test mode at the moment. And if I go to my app, for to your smart app, and we'll change it to auto mode. And it's changed there. So that's all working sweet. Well, that's it. It's all up and running. And I would have to say that this sensor is great. It's um, perfect for what it's designed for. If you want it in your garage, in a pantry, in a, in a bathroom, it connects to Home Assistant really easily. It works with Tuya Local. It does everything it needs to do. It's got lots of options. And I like it, the fact that you can disable it uh, through Home Assistant. So. For 29 bucks, I think that's a bargain. Now I sound like I'm selling it. I'm not, obviously. I, If you want it, you can get it from Bunnings and I don't get paid anything for it. Um, thanks for watching the video. I hope this was helpful. If you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.